So this random lawyer reached out to me on Facebook and he's like, hey, I'm starting this new podcast or he's done a few episodes and he, he wanted me to be on it. So I busted out my little podcast mic and plugged it in and, and he did the same. And then I realized, I was like, dude, can you actually send me that recording? Cause that was like really cool. I really enjoyed being on your podcast. And so I took the footage, I'm editing it up, just kind of throwing our audio on there, syncing the video. And I figured you might enjoy watching this video. I talk about some really cool stuff. So stay tuned. I don't know what that was, but stay tuned. Hey everybody, my name is Al Nicoletti. I'm an attorney here in Florida and welcome to the Al Nicoletti Show where I bring on real estate super investors, rising rock stars, movers and shakers, and leaders of clubs in their community that educate, entertain, and inspire all things Florida real estate. Yep, we're niching in Florida on how you can take your company to the next level. On my show, I have Jesse Lane. I've seen Jesse's content last year during the pandemic. I see it this year in 2021, and I couldn't help myself but reach out to Jesse and say, Jesse, do you want to be on the show? You're killing it in construction. You're killing it in social media. I, I love his videos, and I think you got to check out his YouTube channel, which he will tell you about. But Jesse is crushing it in different levels in the Jacksonville market, and I had to have him on the show so he can share all of his experience, how he's doing it, the numbers, getting into construction multifamily. And on the show today, Jesse is going to talk about how Jesse Lane made $80,000 on YouTube last year and how it's massively grown his business. People are reaching out to him all over the place, and he's being recognized all over the city. So you got to stay tuned for that. And how Jesse became the number one rated GC general contractor in Jacksonville two years in a row and the number one fastest growing business in Jacksonville software systems people management you name it he's got it all right now and how Jesse used flipping real estate single family homes to help Jesse purchase his first apartment building he's going to have so much info packed in a nice session so Jesse without further ado Welcome to my show. Thank you. This is amazing. I'm glad to be here. You're an awesome lawyer, an awesome host. So that introduction was absolutely insane. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, I just uh, your last guest was like the CEO of JWB and like, I, you know, I'm just glad to be here. So um, I guess I'm the CEO of J Lane Construction and <laughs> now J Lane Properties and uh, the Jesse Lane YouTube channel. And, you know, us as humans, we can just kind of create these things in and of our own accord. And we just... Uh, you know, we're the makers of our own destiny. And so that's, that's exciting. Glad to be here. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm having the big names, the big gurus, uh, people that are crushing it in their communities, like that hyper focus or, you know, people in Florida, because like you and I were talking backstage, I think there's so much value to people like you sharing your side of the business. So Jesse, for people that don't know you, haven't heard about you, tell everybody who's Jesse Lane, what were you doing before real estate? And now today, what are you doing? My grandfather was a major developer in, in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I grew up in Pennsylvania. And then my dad was involved a little bit with the developments there. And he would, he would buy a house just because he liked the chandelier. <laughs> he would take the chandelier, paint the front door and sell it for a profit. And so then he kind of uh, snowballed into doing a major multifamily um, development as called Hutchinson Village. Before I was doing real estate, it was already kind of in my blood. Not to say if your blood doesn't have it in you, you can't do it because you can if you're passionate about it, just like anything in life. But um, before I grew up in Pennsylvania from zero to 14 years old, I was a pot smoking, skateboarder, snowboarding three times a week, which was the best part. But um, <laughs> going nowhere in life, got kicked out of every school I went to as a kid. I mean, I was just got caught with pot. I got just, I was a, a kind of a wreck in my, my, my family life. My parents were kind of falling apart too. Um, now we moved to Texas when I was 14 uh, and it actually saved my life. Um, and I, I lived in, in Waco, Texas, actually. Uh, my parents moved down there to be part of this church community and it completely saved their marriage. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a community called Homestead Heritage, but, and it, it, I learned how to horse farm, you know, they're real kind of back to the roots agriculturally and, uh, sustainability and all these different things. So I learned construction. And so a lot of the guys that built George W. Bush's home, uh, a lot of the guys that now work for Chip and Joanna Gaines, um, I was actually taught, taught them like my friend Ethan and all these things, like how to use a nail gun was like, now he's building for Chip. So cool roots. But then I moved there 
from there when I was 19 years old because I just kind of wanted to branch out. I moved pretty much uh, to Jacksonville and I, I, I've always worked for general contractors and different tradespeople building homes. And I worked for a tile guy for a little bit and just learned all these different things after the Texas experience. So when I was 22, I was working for this trim carpenter doing uh, David Weekly Homes and we were doing all kinds of different things inside of there. And um, he's like, you should start your own business. And so in one of the schools I got expelled from, <laughs> the, uh, the kids would call me Jay Lane. And uh, actually, I haven't really ever told anyone this. This so you're the only this audience. If you're watching, you're kind of the only people to know. But um, I started my company, and I just like you know, <clears throat> I like the sound of Jay Lane, Jay Lane Construction. Boom. That was 2014, uh, the beginning of it. End of 2013, it was kind of getting it going. And so beginning of 2014, made it happen. And ever since, I mean, I, so I've just kind of been on this trajectory of, I started off just building someone's set of stairs and I did someone's house remodel. Then I did an addition and then I did a commercial renovate. The first like actual, like big permit I ever really pulled, I was 22, 6,000 square feet commercial build out as a waxing facility. Wow. <laughs> Brazil's waxing center. Anyway, so I was 22 figured it out on the fly, got it done, got a great video review. I mean, these, I, by the skin of my teeth, I mean, these people were um, kind enough to leave me a review. And then that snow, but people saw that snowballed into, oh, can you build us this? Can you build us that? And I've been doing that for, I'm in my eighth year of business. And it, it's been this trajectory of, you know, number one fastest growing business in Jacksonville. We made number 38 out of 5,000, the Inc. 5,000 list for Florida. But then 38 of them were in Jacksonville and I made number one. That's business, not construction company, um, healthcare, everything. Right, right. And then 2019 and 2020, we were awarded best general contractor in Jacksonville, by the Jacksonville award pro program. So Google reviews are important. That's a lot of it. And the website and the social media. And so um, at this point, I don't even remember your question. <laughs> oh, no, this is great. I mean, this is all your background about how it really all got started. Being in Texas, coming to Florida, that had to be also a different experience, different area over there. You come to Florida, it's like the wild, wild west over here, right? There's so many different things. Jacksonville, it's developed, but there's a lot of potential. There's still so many things you can do. So many different areas you can tackle, multifamily, construction. Um, uh, it could be self-storage. It could be all the mobile home parks. There's so many things you can do in the Florida market. But like we were talking about in the opening, you became the number one general contractor in Jacksonville two years in a row so you've been doing this for a while eight years I mean you're seasoned in my mind you're seasoned in a lot of other people's minds you're always doing the stuff on the social media we'll talk about that but yeah. in the coming world up. what's that coming up okay it's coming up yeah absolutely it's coming up but how like what steps did you take specifically in in that construction world uh whether it was either building relationships or the networking or finding good deals finding the right suppliers finding the right connections how did you get to that number one status was it mindset was it podcasts and books you were reading was it steps you were taking mentorship like you had to be doing the right things either consistently following up name it to get to that level, to being the fastest growing business in Jacksonville. What, how did you do it? The biggest thing for me is mindset. I'm glad you said that. Um, it's dedicated time to not watching Netflix at night and reading the books, listening to the audio things. I love Audible, driving around. I, almost there's this exclusive, like months at a time of just like, I say exclusive because I was so, um, it's just so unfortunate. I felt almost bad for other other people that weren't listening to the things I was listening to, like Robert Kiyosaki's books. I felt like I had to just share it. I had to just like, this is exclusive information that anyone can have get a hold of, but I've chosen to dedicate myself to developing my mindset and learn about these things. And that really changed my trajectory. It's like eating broccoli. It's like, it's kind of sucks at first. <laughs> like ice cream is so much better. And, but once you start, it's kind of like this snowball effect of like, you start craving this, this Robert Kiyosaki information. It's like, you know, your house is not an asset. Just like different things like, like the rich develop assets. They don't develop liabilities. Poor people buy cars, watches, this and that before they have assets. And so that's what rich people do is they develop assets first. And so I've learned how to 
self-denial um, and future gratification kind of mindset, but actually like not just mindset, but actually doing these things because it comes down to TFAR, T-F-A-R, our thoughts, which leads to, which is T, our feelings, and then our feelings lead to our actions, and then our actions lead to our results. And so it's this, this linear thing of how we can program ourselves because we're, where do our thoughts come from? It's, it's our programming, how we grew up. What did our parents tell us? What did our friends tell us? What did our teachers tell us? Did we listen to all those things? Did we ingest them into our, who we are at the core? Because then you could start saying, well, where did that thought come from? Is that thought me? Does it define me? Or can I change who I am at the core and just take that thought and not run away like, oh, that guy made me so angry, or I think this certain way. You could take it and be like, wait, why? And then where did it come from at a deeper level? And then who am I at the core that's like producing these feelings, these thoughts, these actions? And so I just think that's so crucial is the things we do is everything, but where, where does it come from? Wow, I was really locked in on what you were saying. So what was the acronym again? T-F-A-R, T-F-A-R. T-F-A-R, wow. So it's, it's a whole mindset process to follow through on. Um, yeah. I, I, I've heard it. So backing up a little bit, this is like the third or fourth time I've heard about the Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think even Greg Cohen talked about that. I had another guest that talked about that. It seemed to be the catalyst for people jumping into the whole real estate world, right? Um, and to talk about all of this stuff is very important because mindset is everything you have to be consistent with what you do and, and tackle it the right way. Like, for example, I heard somebody talking about um, TikTok and like, oh, you got to do TikTok. You got to do TikTok. But the thing is, you have to find a way to make it work that is for you, that you're going to be consistent, that you're going to take action on that are going to lead to results. You can't just do one thing one time and expect things to happen the right way. Same thing with what you're doing. You have to think about it. You have to follow through with it. You have to take the action on it and then you make it happen. Same thing with real estate. That's how you make it happen. I think people in the beginning maybe give up a little too early on it. Um, and I see it from that social media perspective, but we'll dive in on that. But on the real estate end, that's it's incredible to have that mindset. Um, I know Pablo Gonzalez talks about it all the time. And you have to have the software, the systems, and the management because it's all about the client, right? So you have to have that system in place that, I mean, do you outsource? Do you, how do you, how do you automate that system that you have? How do you build those connections? Where are you going um, to build the connections and who are they with? Yeah. And I, I want to, I want to talk about that really fast, but just the, this really fast, if you don't mind this Robert Kiyosaki thing, hopefully it's not backwards for you. Is it? Cause sometimes zoom, no, no, no. there's four quadrants. E stands for employee. And this is a mindset thing that Robert Kiyosaki teaches is called the cash flow quadrant. The S stands for self-employed or small business. The B stands for either big business or just business owner kind of mindset. And then I stands for investor, which you actually talk a lot about too. And the audience is investors and business owners. But what's really helped me is to get out of this employee mindset of trading time for money, no assets. I mean, you could have assets, but it's <clears throat> you're taxed at such a, a a bad rate here of, you know, all of your, you know, all your employee taxes. Now you actually get taxed even worse here um, in the S quadrant as a self-employed person because you are, um, it could be 30, 40% tax. I mean, it's, it's a small business tax and you're, this is, um, Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but lawyers, <laughs> um, if you're a doctor, you know, you kind of have a small business, but, but the point is the, the problem really, um, is if you're trying to be over here on the right side of the quadrant, the problem is you do all the work yourself. So, but, but you, you could maybe develop a small team, but you know, ultimately you're, you're not a, a business owner. Maybe you could be as a lawyer. I mean, but, but ultimately it's, it's your, it's your license, it's your thing. Um, a business owner is someone who has OPT um, and OPM, but other people's time and, and money. But um, it's really the other people's time here in the business quadrant. It's other people's money here in the investor quadrant. So um, it's just a way of thinking to where you can really start outsourcing that's kind of beyond yourself, but it's coming from your mind. I mean, your mind really is everything. So 
So thank you for allowing that. And then moving into your question was uh, social media and stuff like that. I mean, I've had, I've had this YouTube channel. Um, I've always been into making videos. Um, I, I don't know your exact targeted question, but how did I develop clients and how am I developing my business through social media? Well, yeah, I mean, you became this number one GC in Jacksonville and it wasn't just because you, you read books and stuff. I mean, there's obviously networking involved, right? There's building systems. You have to have a system that automates and makes a ton of sense to get there, right? You have to outsource, uh, employ all of that stuff. So like, what were those steps for you? Yeah. yeah. What I've realized is that, is that systems is everything as well as equally people. So systems and people is business, period. A lot of people are just, they're people people, <laughs> but they're just that and they don't have the systems and they're like, you can get stuck in that. Ah, I mean, if I, I'll just do it myself and why would I need to sit there and build a, a document explaining how to do this thing because I'm wasting my time, I'll just do it. Well, if you're thinking more long-term, if you want to keep firing yourself out of all these little tasks and responsibilities, then you have to build systems. And so I've, I, I read the E-Myth. The E-Myth by Michael E. Gerber, Gerber changed my life um, as well as Robert Kiyosaki. But if you, if you haven't, if you're a new entrepreneur or, or not, read the E-Myth. I'm sure you have if you're not a new entrepreneur. But um, it's all about the operations manual. And how do big hotels make it? How do big corporations make it? How does McDonald's make it? We've all heard the McDonald's formula, the Ray Kroc. You know, he, he built the system. He's the, the original guy, right? So what I've done is created a whole separate website, which you can just do on Squarespace. It's super, super simple. And you could, it's, um, it's an internal website that only my employees have access to. And they just can click buttons that immediately download templates, like just Word and Excel files or whatever they need. Um, and it has all these different sections to the website saying, this is what a project manager responsibilities and how to do each thing is. And this is what a superintendent does. And this is what the office admin people do. And boom, 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 and how to do it. There's a general tab. You can request a bonus. You can submit your timesheet. You can, you know, there's this whole internal website that I just kind of built myself. I built all my websites myself. I have like seven or eight different websites. And it's really simple with Squarespace. I don't, I don't know how to code. I don't do that. Um, but yeah, if you kind of just... Um, think outside the box and, and spend the time to develop those things. It's really profitable. That's amazing too, that you, you like Squarespace. Cause if you didn't even say that you said seven to eight websites, first of all, that is super impressive. Uh, I barely even have one right now. Uh, I'm working on it though. And it's going to look really good. It's going to have all my info, but the yeah. fact that you can make seven to eight and then you don't, and, and I love what you just said about Squarespace. You don't have to know how to code. You don't have to know how to do all of those things. You can use what's in front of you on your hands online to do those things, to build out systems. And so that's amazing advice to everybody that's watching this that can say, wait a second, I can do this too. I mean, Jesse's making a lot of sense. It's just Jesse's mindset is thought, feeling, action, do it, result, right? That whole thing. And you can make lots of money too. I built a website called jessielaneconsulting.com. It started out with, hey, I'm going to link a Calendly link to a button saying, and we have a 30 minute session or a 60 minute session, two different buttons. And I, every time someone would book it, I would just up the price because I don't have really the time for it. But now it's like, I think it's 500 bucks to talk to me for an hour, which could go up. So don't quote me, but, um, but people still book it. Like I'm doing one uh, next, you know, next Friday, <clears throat> but it's, it's more about the digital downloads that I've created. Um, talking about systems. I've, I'm very open. I'm a very open person. I want other people to be successful. And so I started, I made a video one time, how to estimate construction projects as a GC. And it now has six figures views. Um, and it made me like $80,000 so far. It is in, in a 12 to 14 month period, um, which is insane. I, I figured like, I'm going to sell this little spreadsheet that I show on the video for like 97 bucks. I'm like, dude, what if I sold like 20 of these things? Oh, I've sold like five or 600 <laughs> and like, wow. that's just, um, like, sorry, I'm getting a call from a, a multifamily, uh, <laughs> guy oh, that wants that, to do so one. All right. Th All right. Yeah. 320, uh, units. And I'm now getting blown up with clients. But, um, so then I started this, uh, I, I built a proposal template, sold that for $197. And then I built an invoicing pay application template, sold that for 97. So they can buy the whole package for 299. And then I sold like hundreds of those. And so it's just like, wow, like that's how the YouTube channel of me dedicating hours at night. No, I'm not going to go out to hang out with my friends. I'm going to 
stay home and like crunch through and edit on my video so it could be posted tonight so like I can get back to work tomorrow morning and crush my commercial general contracting business, J Lane Construction. Um, so anyways, I, there's dedication aspects, but also a passion aspect and a kind of just, you know, digital aspect of just being willing to learn and watch videos on how to build a Squarespace website. Right, for sure. So you do all this consulting stuff. So there is a way that if people are interested in what you do and listen to this and say, hey, I got to get a hold of Jesse Lane about all of this stuff, they can get they can go on your website. I'll make sure that we have your website for that. Maybe all of them too. It's up to you what you want to do. But it'll be out there with the social links, the, the channel, everything. So if they're interested, they can get a hold. Of so it's uh, jessilaneconsulting.com. And then it's just jlaneconstruction.com. And then my Instagram is Jesse Lane TV, J E S S E L A N E TV. Yeah, we'll make sure we have all of that stuff. But so, I, I love how in the middle of that, you're, you're a businessman. Like you got phone, your phone's ringing. You got to put out the fires. So you you wanted to talk about how you were flipping single family homes that helped you get to your first apartment purchase building. Talk to us about that because now it sounds like you're doing so many other things now. What was that? Just like a 326 unit apartment complex or something? Yeah. Yeah. We have tons. We're doing a lot of multifamily work um, through J Lane Construction. So it's interesting now that I bought my own little small apartment. It's a 10 unit apartment building. My first one. I'm kind of feeding myself multifamily work now and on top of everything we're doing for our clients. So it's kind of like this circle that I'm kind of building for being my own client, it's kind of fun. But I started off flipping one home and then I did another one. And then I did another one that came with a lot. And I actually had a business partner on this one, which I'm actually partnering uh, my co my cousin, Alan, with um, some commercial GC stuff because he's been a commercial GC for 25 years. And so we're kind of partnering under J Lane Construction now, but more on that later. It's kind of a private thing. But we, we bought this house with a lot like in San Marco area and um, it was through a wholesaler and it was probate. Actually, I know you do a lot of probate stuff, which I don't really know a whole lot about. So you're the genius, but the master, but uh, it was probate and we, we bought it through a wholesaler skip. And, uh, you know, we, we offered above asking price because there was all these bidders and we got it for like 251. Then there, it came with this big side yard and we're like, man, we could sell this like $50,000, like maybe like, I don't even know. So we talked to our realtor buddy, um, and, uh, John Singleton. And he was like, yeah, like you could sell it for this. Cause he does a lot in that area. And so we wound up selling it to, uh, actually, um, I know you've in interviewed JWB, uh, CEO, but the guy who builds all their homes and stuff, um, sold to him and he $105,000. And so we were pretty stoked to, to get that for it. And uh, then we put that money into the house and we sold that for like 400 and something thousand dollars. And we made it, we made like, I think a $75,000 profit on that deal in like a five or six month period or something like that. And then I took that, my, at the same time, I was doing this other one in St. Nicholas, burnt down, Yellow Bird, sat next to this guy, Yellow Bird. He had just bought a franchise, uh, We Buy Ugly Homes. And he's like, yeah, I might have this deal, burnt down, St. Nicholas, blah, blah, blah. I was on Palmer, Palmer, um, Terrace and uh, Jacksonville, Florida, of course. And so we, I bought it and uh, like 169 or something like that. And he bought it for, he made his little, little 10, 15 grand or more. And, um, and then I put like, man, I, <laughs> it BPO, I think, I, th I think that stands for like a broker's private opinion or something like that. 320, 315, like ARV after a pair of value. And I'm like, okay. So I started putting money into this thing. We completely gutted it at fire, you know, like, there was like voodoo dolls. I shouldn't say that, but maybe take the part out. But like, we like completely like gutted. Don't worry. We completely cleaned the place out. And so <laughs> we just reframed the, I mean, I did 25 grand worth of just like beams and permits and framing. And, but I, I spent like close to $200,000 on the renovation on this house. Um, I really, wow. really went hard. And then COVID hit in March and April. And it really put me behind. I mean, I was paying like, hundreds of dollars in interest every single day that just rolled by and all of a sudden we can't get a permit. Ugh, no one's calling. I mean, no one's picking up our calls at the building department. Two months went by, no permit, nothing. I mean, even as a GC, it was like impossible. I mean, the fire marshal watches my YouTube videos. <laughs> and like, I know that the chief building official, I walk up to this, I'm doing, I'm doing a whole nightclub downtown on Bay street. And I walk up and we're like, Captain Groff, like, Hey man, he's like, Jesse Lane. He's like, I watch all your YouTube videos. And you know, I'm like him and 
Chief Jones and Captain Grab were all kind of like doing this meeting, but they know who I am going back to that social media presence is pretty cool. Um, cause I post them on Facebook and you'd add people on Facebook. It's important. I don't, I'm not a big LinkedIn guy, but, but I believe in it. It's just, I can only, like you're saying TikTok, right? I mean, I don't even do TikTok. You can only focus on yeah. so many things, you know? So Instagram and Facebook and YouTube are like my trifecta, but I might branch out eventually, but it's like Adam on Facebook, the CEO of this, the building official of that. And then they see you post your YouTube video. They see it. Like, oh, this is cool. Like, boom. Anyways. So and that, that's a lot of different stuff there. <laughs> the takeaway I get from you, Jesse, and I love everything you're saying is that you are a collaborator. You're a networker. You love working with the community, whether it's JWB, whether it's Yellowbird. And I think all of that plus your mindset makes you a successful businessman because you, you have to have that collaboration. You have to have people working with you. And the fact that even because of the YouTube channel, the community knows who you are. So yeah. there's a lot playing into the success about how you're getting to that next level right and uh, we were talking about this even backstage about covid side note how did covid affect your business drastically um i was I had this airplane hanger i had like five or six or seven like large like of course like way big they're bigger than six figures um commercial projects like mo this is multi-millions of dollars worth of problems that people were like they froze their capital. They're like, we don't, we can't give you, we can't move forward. We can't invest in this for like six months of 2019. Was it? Um, no, 2020. So uh, last year. <laughs> so we, right. 2019 was my best year. 2020 sucked. It was horrible. I mean, I, I experienced like a 25% drop at least on like just gross revenue. Um, when I was on this doubling income trajectory, like, uh, you know, 200% kind of stuff even 300, 300%, I mean, over a course of, you know, but a few years, but so long story short, it's, um, majorly devastated almost, but I hung in there and I found ways to like doing these flips and doing different things where like I made over, definitely over six figures doing just the flips last year on top of the 70 or 80 grand from YouTube. And then on top of what my construction wow. company made, yeah, and it sounds, but like when you were talking about it before with the permits, it really sounds like as soon as you were doing so much stuff in 2019 leading into 2020, and then when 2020 hits, like the permits shut down, I think title and liens were kind of like closed to, courts closed, like so many things kind of like came to a standstill, the hedge funds stopped. Uh, funding and dealing with contracts. So many people backed out of contracts. And and like I was telling you, I love the video that you did when it all kind of happened. And it was just that powerful video of you just talking about how this is totally transforming your business right now and giving hope to people about how you get through it and sharing that, right? That's a, that's a key thing that you do. So yeah. hearing your side to how it changed, I've asked other people that early on in the show, I've changed a lot of the questions as I've gone, as you can imagine, going through 30 different episodes. I've definitely got a, a different twist. I interviewed Tyler Austin and after Tyler Austin, I was like, boom, I know how to do this show now. Um, but then, you know, I get to people like you and it was a question I'd ask. And some people say it had no effect. Some people said it had minimal effect. And some people like you would say it drastically impacted it right when it hit and it changed the permitting construction. So that's powerful stuff for you to share. Yeah. And the commercial real estate, cause I'm a commercial GC. I do tenant improvements and build outs. And when you can't go into a commercial space or whatever, it's like, uh, we need to see what's going to happen before we invest our money. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, you, you always have to know what you're doing before you dive in. Now, one of the favorite topics I love talking about only because I've been getting it into it more lately, like content uh, marketing, uh, being a content monster, as Pablo calls it. And I've realized the impact that social media has had because just like the fire, uh, with the fire department found you, right? I'm also noticing that's what's happened in my business as well. I'll say, hey, I saw the video. Hey, you know, hey, what about this? What do you do with this? So there is a major impact when you start putting yourself out there, not only just putting yourself out there, but being top of mind for people so that they see you say, hey, it's another video. Hey, it's another thing. He's got more content to share. And I love how you were talking about how you've monetized YouTube. You've monetized it to make 80,000 on YouTube alone. I want to learn this. I want to hear more about this and how it's grown your business. But also what we what I was mentioning before was you have to find your rhythm 
with the things that work, right? So yeah, I'm not on TikTok because I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm not I'm not focused on that. I know how to, fo- I want to focus on things that I can be consistent at. I thought about this in the car the other day. I like YouTube because I know how to be consistent at it. I like Facebook because I now figured out how to be consistent at it. And thank goodness I have a team that can help with pumping out and distributing the content. Same way with you. Not the biggest LinkedIn fan because I don't know how it fits in in what our world is with videos and, and content and pure educational informational content. But we have to hear this whole thing about how you've monetized YouTube, you've conquered the social media market because I'm learning too and I can learn from you too. I think it's just like when you're posting your first YouTube videos for like six years or five years or four years, when it has... 62.5 views, <laughs> you know, or 12 views. That's discouraging. And I did that for years, years, because it's my passion and I enjoyed it. So I think you have to enjoy it and learn how to maybe do it yourself if you don't have kind of like the finances to hire a team. Even now, I have one guy who's like a young kid who's interested in real estate, interested in business. He's filming videos, editing videos, but you know, we're still working through, he's a couple months in editing, like really the Jesse Lane style. It's like the touch that I put on my edits. He'll edit for like six hours. And I'm like, ah, I got to put another like hour or two just to like uh, 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 tweak it, you know? And then I train him. And so I'm building the systems alone just for that. Right. And so that'll be a work in progress, but even still, you know, it's still a work in progress, but yeah, like I was in the, I was getting my truck washed um, last week and this guy, I was waiting in the waiting room, this guy, I was on speakerphone, or I was on, my, on the phone with my business partner and we're talking through this major issue. This guy comes running into the store. He's like, Jesse Lane. I'm like, hold on one sec. Yeah. What's up, man? He's like, I watch all your YouTube videos. Like he's like, I have no idea who this guy is. And he's like, I told him all my friends about you. They want to become general contractors. And he's like, blah, 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 blah. So he's like, can I like have it? I'm like, yeah, here's, here's a business card. Like reach out. Like he's like, man, like I'm going to add you. Like I had you on Facebook, like this and that. He's like, but he's just connecting with people locally. And then the next day I'm buying my apartment building and the home, the, the inspector that's doing the thing. He's like, man, you look familiar. Um, Another client <laughs> calling, oh, um, no, yeah. but I'll, I'll call him back. So um, then this, this, uh, the inspector was like, um, dude, you look familiar. And uh, I was like, he's like, did you do a video? Like how to get your general contractor's license on YouTube? I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, I watched that video. I'm like, I'm trying to get my general contractor's license. And so we just connected on that level. And I've even been in Kentucky, like at a general contracting um, conference. And the speaker of the conference was like, Jesse, you look familiar. He's like, he's like, you know, I've watched your YouTube videos. And I mean, I got a comment yesterday from someone in Nova Scotia and like, um, and then like, you know, comments, tons of comments from people all around the world. And I really don't have that. Like I have under 20,000 followers or subscribers and I've, I've been doing that for a little while, but like a couple of years on that channel, I had a I say that because I had a whole nother channel doing guitar lessons. <laughs> yeah, wow. No one, this is kind of like a funny thing, but I won't linger on it, but it's just, I did that. But you know what though? It's kind of like how you build seven to eight websites. You have like different YouTube channels. It's it's like your same thing that you do. I don't do it anymore, but it was, it was my start. And so I developed like, again, 17,000 subscribers on that, I had millions of views. And so um, it just was another thing back in 2013, 2014, 15. But anyways, now I started learning like, oh, I should focus on my business like in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, doing this Jesse Lane YouTube channel, just type in Jesse Lane. But um, yeah, so it's really affected my life. It's affected my relationships. I was even at church. Um, I was going to this, this new church with a friend and this lady comes running up to me. She's like, Jesse Lane, I watch all of your YouTube videos. Like, like she's like me and my husband, like watch all your videos. And like, we love seeing how you take a property from like, from like burnt down to like the final product. Cause I, I do the videos like that at the end where it's like, you can see the whole process. So it's just cool. It's cool to be able to kind of slowly develop a brand, you know? Right. And I love that mindset that you have too, because that's why the Al Nicoletti YouTube channel is Al Nicoletti. Like same thing. You find it, Jesse Lane, it's a brand. Like you have to do it like that. And the fact that, I, I, tell me about this. 
Did you ever expect that you would get that kind of reaction from people just randomly? Like, I'm sure that was not your mindset about like, this is what I'm looking for. What was your first reaction when you heard that? Like, you must have been thinking, wow, this is truly working and it's going to work for my business and brand. It's the gold behind the mining that you do for years until it really starts becoming profitable. I mean, obviously there's a thing in the back of your mind, like what if this works? Cause I'm not doing it for necessarily myself, but I almost am. I kind of take that back, but almost it's 50, 50. So I take it back half the percentage and other half. I'm like, no, you're dumb. Like it's all if it's for other people. <laughs> so right. I love it myself. Also other people are really, really loving it. So I'm like, Oh, this is like a hundred percent win. You know? Yeah, for sure. If people are reaching out to you for projects all over the city, um, it, are they reaching out to you even from other states? Um, yes. I built a 40,000, well, I did a renovation. I have a 40,000 square foot auto dealership and they were in Texas. I built a wood forest bank inside of Walmart. They were also in Texas. I built an animal clinic. They were in Birmingham, Alabama. All of that was in Jacksonville. But with our cloud-based app, we get daily logs, the schedule, it's all cloud-based, which not many other people really, like they have project management apps, but they like don't really know how to use it. Like I've talked to a lot of general contractors and done consulting and been in the conferences and they, they have Procore, they have Builder Trend, they have Co-Construct, but they don't really know how to like build the systems to where it's like, make sure your superintendent does a daily log every single day. Like it's just not, you know, so those are the things that J Lane Construction offers that other people don't. A lot of thinking that goes into it and you have those systems in place, you can be successful. So Je Jesse, these are super valuable tips. I love all this YouTube stuff. I'm gonna check out your YouTube channel. We were talking about that before. I hadn't seen it. Now I'm gonna go watch it because if people are noticing it, you're doing something right and people can learn from what you're doing, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, you just have to do it consistently. Even myself, I'm doing things consistently because I know if you're if you're consistent and you get with it, you will have results. You you saw one of my videos where uh, how COVID nineteen affected my business, <clears throat> and you felt my heart because I was right. honest. And I think heart and value are where if you're trying to do a YouTube channel to talk to the audience, then bring value but speak from the heart. And I, don't try to be like, <clears throat> hey, I am Jesse Lane, and I'm. Uh, the best and I do this and I, I no, Hey, I want to help you, the audience. This is how you estimate construction project. This is how to read blueprints. This is how to do this, how to do that. Hey, another form of video is I'm doing this real estate deal, or maybe you're doing this probate deal or whatever you're doing now. And you could bring them through the process of construction of, for me, of the deal for you of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Bringing them through, providing value, giving great tips for sure. People want to hear that how they're how you're helping them. Um, also, you have a great speaking style. You're you're good at like using the animation because people I think are attracted to that. Right when they're watching videos, they want to know that like oh I'm I'm really in depth with this person. I'm really taking a lot from this. So great speaking style too. They'll 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 catch you in your fake too. Like people can feel it. So if I was doing like oh Jesse Lane does this with his arm. <laughs> do this it's like oh this is i can't watch this it's too cringy i can't handle this guy right now yeah no i get it jesse so valuable uh, i can't wait for people to listen to this um i know you have a lot to go you have you have people calling clients calling i, want, I never usually do this as the end for the signature questions but i'll do it almost like in a rapid fire session um i always ask these questions biggest deal killers that you find in your deals i mean i can get around at this point really any construction problem but the numbers are the problem. Like how much is that going to cost me would be the deal killer. That's my speed round question answer. <laughs> Great. No, that's perfect. That's what we need. How, what is the best tip and or trick to locking up a contract and or deal, getting it to closing? Be responsive and sign whatever they send over to you like soon. And if you know, review it, make sure it's good. Uh, like, like when I bought this apartment building, um, they just a mountain of paperwork and I spent like a three quarter of a, one of the days last week, just doing all their paperwork gathering and taxes and, and insurance docs and personal financial statements and blah, 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 track records. And what did you make on each single deal? Listen in a spreadsheet and show us the closing state, the closing docs and the HUDs and all of the different things. So it's like, just kind of, you know, learn how to be productive and follow through with things. 
and lay it all out there for people to know what's really going on, right? Like they, people have to see it. I feel like that's a, that's a visual component to people. They need to see it so then they take action too, right? So last question is, we talked about this. How do you build trust between you and your business partners, the relationships that you make to either get the deal, to get the construction deal, to closing or doing the flip and just building connections? How are you building that relationship? Because you are well connected. Again, you're with, you know, if you're connecting with JWB and the Yellowbirds, you're doing something totally right in the community and with people following you and joining your team, you're doing something. So what is that secret? This is the secret sauce. Are you ready? Go for it. It's already built. Before they call, the trust is already built. Gotcha. Gotcha. They've seen, yeah. they've seen my client testimonial videos on my website. They've looked me up. They've seen research. Who's Jesse Lane? Oh, YouTube video. Okay, cool. Oh, Facebook. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Here's his Instagram. They've already said, I trust this guy enough to call him. Then it's just ABC, always be closing from there, but then it's close the deal. It's just another 20%, 80% of it's built. So how do I build trust with a new client? Was That was the question. 80% of right. it's built because of the groundwork I've laid, social media, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully it makes sense to you. And then 20% is just my personality with them, talking about my team and my systems and processes and our past projects and different things. And then being understanding what they want and their needs are and then fulfilling those things and then send them the DocuSign. <laughs> yeah, right. At the end of the day, right. That, that's the tip and the trick to get to uh, the closing, right. The DocuSign. No, that that's fantastic because what we, oh, what I forget from time to time is that before somebody even meets me, I forget there's Google. So they look it up like, who is this? What do they do? How do they make it happen? Oh, he's interesting. He does all this stuff. So yeah, people are already looking you up before they get to you. So you're right. The trust is there from the get go. Um, and of course, solving the problems to helping them uh, get to that end goal is a big part of it. So, hey, so. quick question. Can I post this on my YouTube channel? Absolutely. Oh, send, yeah. send me the, the video. Shout out to you. How can people find you? Al Nicoletti YouTube channel. All right, so the tables are turned. So everybody can find the Al Nicoletti YouTube channel at Al Nicoletti. You can also find me on Facebook. I think it's at Attorney Nicoletti or Al Nicoletti. And I have the Facebook business page as Al Nicoletti. Pretty much just started it up, Jesse. I'm posting all of the content. I have live webinars once a month. I think I'm doing it like the second Wednesday of every month. And then, of course, I got the Instagram at Attorney Nicoletti. I'm on Clubhouse that everybody can find the new whole Clubhouse craze uh, where people are just dropping content. It's like a 24-hour podcast at Al Nicoletti. Um, and so there's tons of stuff out there. You can find me. It's, you can't miss it. If you just drop in Al Nicoletti on Google, it's there. Love it, man. That's awesome. But so most importantly, Jesse, where can people find you? Just man, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook if you want, but YouTube, Jesse Lane, Instagram, Jesse Lane TV. Perfect. Look at that. Yeah. You're going to have TV soon. You have your own TV channel. It's not going to be HGTV. It's going to be Jesse Lane TV. They, they, yeah, I, they picked me for this HGTV show. Um, but then COVID hit and it completely lost rails. So eventually I'll do some TV, but too busy right now. <laughs> well, you got people calling the phones ringing. That's all that's important. And you're making it happen, man. So Jesse, thanks again. What's that? It was a pleasure being on the show. Yeah, no, I, I loved it. I appreciate it. And um, I want you invited back here when I have the full in-person podcast setting. Yeah, it's going to be lights. It's going to be a full live stream. So we'll live it on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Yeah, it's going to have like four to five cameras, everything in here. So I have the, yeah, so I have the whole thing ready to go. So you're coming back. You're invited. I'd love to have you back. You've been great on the show. Thanks again, Jesse. Thanks, man. All yeah. right, everybody, if you want more content like this, make sure you check out the Al Nicoletti YouTube channel, the Al Nicoletti Facebook business page, the Al Nicoletti personal page, and I'm on Instagram and Clubhouse at Al Nicoletti. There's going to be all this content on probate, partitions, quiet title, and of course, the amazing podcast here with Jesse Lane talking about all this stuff on construction, social media, and real estate. It's all there and all the other episodes with all the special guests I've had on my show. So stay tuned next time on the Al Nicoletti Show. I'll see you then.